video, we're going to do some analysis that is really only applicable to IB higher level economic students or other introductory students who are learning about linear equations in uh, markets for particular goods. So we're looking at the same graph, actually, as we did in our previous two videos, showing the market for cigarettes. In this instance, though, we've now applied linear equations to these graphs. So the demand curve here is represented by the equation QD equals 50 minus 4P. And the supply curve is represented by the equation QS equals negative 7.5 plus 7.5P. Now we're going to make the same assumption that we did in the previous two videos, that the government decides to levy a $2 per pack tax on the market for cigarettes which will have the same effect that it did in the previous videos, which was it will decrease the supply curve for cigarettes by shifting the marginal cost up by $2 per pack. However, now, rather than just simply drawing the increase in the marginal cost and the decrease in supply, we're going to apply this $2 tax to our equation here and come up with a new supply equation for cigarettes, knowing that following the tax, producers of cigarettes will be receiving $2 less for every pack than the price that consumers pay. Knowing that, it's quite simple to come up with a new supply equation. Here's our original supply equation. The assumption is that this $2 tax will be subtracted from the price that consumers pay. Knowing this, we can come up with the new supply equation. The new supply equation will be QS equals negative 7.5 plus 7.5 times P minus 2. Now the minus 2 here represents the $2 tax. Since the price consumers pay is $2 greater than the price that producers will get to keep. Now that we have a new supply equation, we can simplify this and find out mathematically what our new equilibrium price and quantity will be. Let's simplify this equation now. QS now equals negative 7.5 plus 7.5P minus 15. Of course, we took the 7.5 and multiplied it by negative 2 and we took the 7.5 and multiplied it by the P to come up with this new equation. Let's simplify this again. We know that now QS equals negative 7.5 plus 7.5 P minus 15. We can simplify this. So quantity supplied now equals negative 22.5 plus 7.5 P. Now we have our new supply equation. And of course the next step would be to find the price intercept of the new supply curve so that we can draw it more accurately on our graph on the right. To find the price intercept we must set the quantity equal to zero and solve for P. So let's do that now. We've got zero equals negative 22.5 plus 7.5 P. Simplify again we see that 22.5 equals 7.5 P and if we divide both sides by 7.5, we get the p-intercept. 22.5 divided by 7.5 equals 3. This tells us where our new supply curve will begin. It will begin at a quantity of 0 and a price of 3. Of course, this makes total sense because it was a $2 tax after all, and the original supply curve had a p-intercept of 1. Therefore, the new supply curve we'll have a p-intercept of 1 plus the $2 tax. So our new supply curve will be sloping upwards, starting at a price intercept of 3, but notice that since it is a specific tax and not an ad valorem tax, the slope of the new supply curve is the same as the slope of the original supply curve, determined by the responsiveness of producers to price changes, or the d variable in our equation. So it's still a, a constant slope um, from the original supply curve. So we've now got our new supply with tax curve. The price intercept is 3. Now we can take this new supply equation, equate it to our original demand equation, since there's been no change in demand, to find more accurately the new equilibrium price. So now let's take our new supply equation of negative 22.5 plus 7.5 P and set it equal to our original demand equation of 50 minus 4 P to solve for the new equilibrium price that consumers will pay. And from that we can actually determine very easily the new price that producers will get to keep. 
So to solve for our new equilibrium price, we can simply add 4p to both sides, and we get that 11.5p equals, and we can add 22.5 to both sides, so we get 72.5. And if we divide both sides by 11.5, we can solve for our new equilibrium price, which is $6.30. So if you recall from our original video lesson on the effect of an excise tax on the market for cigarettes, we estimated that it was around $6.20 based only on our graphical analysis. But here we can see more accurately using our new linear supply equation that the actual equilibrium price paid by consumers following the $2 excise tax is $6.30. Now we should be able to fairly easily solve for the new equilibrium quantity as well by plugging the price of 630 into one of the two equations. So let's do that now. We can see that the quantity demanded is going to equal 50 minus 4 times $6.30. So the new quantity demanded and supplied should be 50 minus, uh, that's 25.2, which equals 24.8 thousand cigarettes. So we've actually got a new equilibrium quantity here more accurate than we did in our original version of this video lecture when we did not use the linear equations. We can see that following the two dollar tax on each pack of cigarettes the quantity falls to 24.8 thousand cigarettes at a price of six dollars and thirty cents. Now it should be very simple to determine the price that producers get to keep following this excise tax and we do that by subtracting two dollars the two dollar tax which must be paid from the price that consumers pay. Therefore, the $2 tax has to be subtracted here, and we can see very easily that the price that producers get to keep, which is determined by the original supply curve, is $4.30. Now, again, of course, to uh, conclude our analysis, we can actually calculate the amount of consumer tax burden, which is represented by this rectangle as explained in a previous video lecture, and we can calculate the amount of producer tax burden as well. Producer tax burden, of course, is represented by the green triangle, or, or I'm sorry, the green rectangle here, um, below the original price and above the new price kept by producers. Now to do this, we can simply find out how much per pack each consumer is paying and multiply this by the number of packs being consumed. So we know that the per pack tax paid by consumers is the new price of $6.30 minus the original price of $5, so it's $1.30. And, and we know that consumers are buying 20 Four point eight thousand packs. So to find the actual amount of consumer tax burden, we can simply take 24.8 and multiply it by the per pack tax burden, and we get a consumer tax burden of 32.24. And of course, this is thousands of dollars. We can see that consumers are going to end up paying 32.24 thousand dollars towards this tax. Now we can do similar analysis to find out how much of the total tax will be paid by producers. So let's now apply the per pack producer tax burden which since consumers are paying 130 producers must be paying per pack two dollars the full amount of the tax minus the producers tax or minus the consumers tax burden so it's 0 0.7 dollars or 70 cents and we know there are 24 point eight thousand packs being sold times the producer tax per pack burden and we see that the total tax burden paid by producers is equal to seventeen point three six of course this is thousands of dollars so seventeen thousand three hundred and sixty dollars represented by this area here Now, wouldn't it also be nice if we could determine the total amount of tax revenue generated from this tax? Well, that should be quite easy now because we know how much tax will be paid by consumers and we know how much tax will be paid by producers. And as we learned in previous videos, the total amount of tax revenue is equal to the 
sum of the consumer burden and the producer burden. So all we need to do is take the consumer burden of 32.24 thousand and add the producer burden of 17.36 thousand and very easily we can come up with the total amount of tax revenue generated which is $49,600, $49.6,000. So we can see that the total amount of tax revenue generated is the sum of the consumer tax burden of $32,240 and the producer tax burden of $17,360, which is $49,600. This is how much tax will be raised from a $2 per pack cigarette tax shared between consumers and producers. Again, since demand for cigarettes is relatively inelastic, we found that the blue rectangle representing consumer burden was larger than the green rectangle representing producer burden. Now all, of we've, all that we've done is applied our linear equations to find the actual equilibrium price and quantity resulting from the $2 tax. And using that simple, um, using those simple equations, we could quite easily come to the amount of tax revenue generated.